I chose Bruce Oson's Steel Bridge as my Howland 2024 cherry pick. This depiction of Corvallis's historic bridge calls attention to the subject's antiquity with the artist's use of black and sepia tones. It's a beautiful painting, simplified and elemental. Here is an invitation to come explore the bridge's iconic past. The loose brush strokes representing the wooden timber decking that, at the turn of the century when built, laid passage for horse-drawn wagons alongside the motorized horseless carriages of the day. Here's a pathway for pedestrians to cross while gazing down at Oregon's Willamette River. The prominence of the steel bridge truss is testimony to over a century of integrity and strength. Built to last 100 years, time has come to replace with the new. It's with respect and this sense of nostalgia that we say goodbye to this old friend. This is Brian Egan, and my cherry pick piece for the Howland Open 2024 is Bird with Fall Foliage Feathers by Carol Chapel. The bird, a rufous-sided swamp sparrow, has stopped its ascent to check out the seed pod left over from this year's bloom. Behind it, you can see the beautiful brushwork, eye-catching lines, and blending of colors that are indicative of Carol's recent work. The scene certainly caught my eye, and I hope yours as well. Since Carol used her artistic license to create the bird, I used the same method to name the bird species, so don't bother to look it up. I was drawn to Colleen Kitchen's piece by the bright colors and the interesting choice of medium. I love the way her work changes as you move towards and away from it. Up close, it's fun to try and identify the materials used, but take a few steps back and the work completely transforms into a colorful village with so much depth and movement. I could spend a lot of time daydreaming about the people who live there. I'd like to comment on The Colorful Dog by Alpina Sun. I was immediately attracted to the playful and personal quality of this happy puppy portrait. There seems to be an honest transparency to the young artist's interpretation of a well-loved pet, and the seemingly haphazard application of color makes it even more fun. Phil Coleman has captured the pastel gradient left by the Provencal sun on a simple linear structure over the period of a day, without the distraction of a majestic cathedral or a pastoral haystack landscape. His beautiful keyboard of colors bears witness of the transience of light, a concept that was used by Claude Monet to represent change. Phil's photo brings the warmth of Southern France to anybody who look at this photo and enjoys the memories. Honesty by Aspen McCallum hooked me in with its bold use of color and dreamy composition, and it entranced me for a time with its layers of complexity and vulnerability. After exploring the array of colors and shapes on the top layer, I clocked the handwritten pencil journal notes beneath. The bits of text I could make out felt incredibly relatable, like I was getting a direct line to the artist's stream of consciousness, even though I didn't have the complete story. Discovering the title of the piece and that it's a monotype print then recontextualized the piece all over again, and that depth was stunning. I don't consider this work, Eclipse by Anne Sherrod Quattara, necessarily the best or the most accomplished or the most beautiful in the exhibition, but my eye keeps being drawn to it. It has such economy of means in technique and in color. It seems the perfect combination of material and intent. The deep black of the almost covered up sun is so intense, it sucks me in. Its flatness expresses the void of the moon shadow on the sun. The yellow floppy rim represents the last bit of sun that hasn't been covered up yet. Its shape is freeform and irregular. It expresses the power of the sun with its surface covered in flames perfectly. All this powerful expression in one simple crochet stitch and two and a half colors. After walking to the art center on a record warm winter day, 
I was immediately drawn toward Cheryl Christner's north wind. There you are, I thought, while I felt a shiver on my arms. I imagined north wind slipping off the wall and sneaking around in pointy-toed slippers, casting hoarfrost about. I loved the playfulness Cheryl captured in a surprised, yet mischievous expression, and the irony of being made of wool and silk, two of our warmest fibers, as though even North Wind's wind was too cold for them at times. I see my younger, curious, maybe a little voyeuristic self in a third secret room. When I was young, a look into someone's room or kitchen distracted me from my own unstable childhood. It was as if I could, by seeing a small moment of their lives, experience a little comfort, just for that moment. In this piece, the centerpiece mirror reflects my own gaze, causing me to confront my memories centered around my former curiosities and acknowledge my present desire for safety and privacy for myself. Nothing Was Wasted is a dynamic sculpture created by young artist Edra Ward. I appreciate all the materials used, items found around the house that would otherwise be discarded, recycled orange peels, toothpicks, old paint samples, and I am drawn to the intricate architecture that was created. I'm very excited to see what will come from this artist next. The artwork I selected for my cherry pick is Modern Day Ghosts by Lloyd Kimmeldorf. The photographer presents us with an oddly eerie yet humorous scene here. What is this thoroughly cloaked phalanx of stormtroopers up to? Heading for a close encounter with a downed UFO? Racing to the rescue of an environmental disaster? Or is it a hazmat cleanup crew approaching a spill? Rather than try to solve the mystery by shooting the scene from a more informative perspective like a photojournalist would do, our photographer has instead chosen to intensify the enigma by shooting from behind. The viewers are stuck in the rear view, left to ponder the mystery themselves. 